So hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So school's about to be in full swing. In fact, some of you have may already even started. Two years ago, I made this video called Some College Advice to Help You Thrive. And I was watching it the other day and I realized that I was saying a lot of stuff that um, didn't make sense. It was actually very bad advice. And I don't know why I even made that video because at that point in time, I had literally only had three fourths of a year of school under my belt. So who told me I was qualified enough to talk about college advice? I don't know, but I did it. Anyway, so. So now I'm a rising senior, which is terrifying and makes me feel awful. But what that does mean is that I think I'm now qualified to talk about advice for college students, especially college freshmen, and how to help you succeed and thrive in your new environment. So let's get into it. So now, how to make friends. This is really important because this is gonna make or break your college experience, probably. If you have friends, you can get through anything, and I mean that, like, in the realest way possible. So in my previous video that I made two years ago, I introduced this notion of a friendship buddy, which is someone that you go around with to all of your like orientation events that you already know pretty well. So for me, it was my roommate. It could be someone you just stalked on Instagram. It could be someone you know from home. It could be someone you just meet like two seconds in. But if you are going to these events, with another person, it is gonna immediately make that initial introduction, which is normally so awkward, into more of a group dynamic. Instead of you having to approach big groups by yourself, you can approach big groups with a partner, which is much, much less intimidating. Believe me, I've been there. So friendship buddy still is a good idea. I still highly would recommend. Some of my new advice that I have learned in the past couple years is that the first couple friends you make at college, you're gonna be really tempted to kind of hang on to. And there's this mindset that like, the people you meet in the first two weeks are gonna be your best friends for the next four years. That can sometimes be true, but a lot of times it's not true. And a lot of the times the people that you happen to meet on your first couple of weeks end up being people that you don't necessarily vibe with. At least for me, in order for me to get really close to someone, I like really have to vibe with their energy. Like our energies have to be like, like this, like this. The people I met in the first couple weeks of school didn't really fit in that way for me. But since I met them and they were my closest friends because I had no close friends because no one has close friends, I think I latched myself on and clung to them a little bit too tightly when in reality, I should have kept making more friends even past the first couple weeks, even past the first month, even past the first year. And so for a while, I was really struggling with like, why can't I get close to my closest friends? They were my closest friends by like proximity and by timeline, not really because they were actually the best friends for me. Does that make sense? I sure hope so. Another thing is that once you do make friends, you can't just rely on these like proximity interactions to make that friendship last. So one thing that I did that was bad was I was like, well, these people live on my hall, so we'll see each other every day. So that's obviously how we're gonna remain friends right? And it worked for like the time that we lived together. But then once you don't live together, you're not going to like talk anymore. And if you want that friendship to last for a long time, guess what? You have to put in a little bit more effort than that. What does putting an effort look like? Well, that would be like, oh, let's go grab lunch together. Or, oh, do you want to go study together? Or like, let's like, just like sit and get coffee. Let's just talk or just like text them often. Simply relying on these like face-to-face -face interactions that just happen because you guys live next to each other is really not what's gonna make a friendship last. And that's what I learned during COVID when we all got sent home. And if something like COVID happens when you all get sent home and there's no way that you can see each other in the hallway anymore, what is your friendship gonna turn into? And then one day you'll look up and suddenly all your close friends are little more than acquaintances and you have no one that's truly close to you. And then you start to panic because you realize that you don't actually have any real friends. Not speaking from experience or whatever, but just trust me on this one. Okay? Okay. So next, how to sign up for classes. Now I gave some pretty shit advice in my first video on this because I basically said, um, look around, see what other people, other freshmen are signing up for and sign up for those classes because then you'll have friends in those classes and that's the most important thing, right? Wrong. I think I quote unquote said, take classes your friends are taking because then it will be easier. Like girl, what? I'm outing myself as a stupid person. Now listen. It is true that having a support system, quote unquote, for a certain class is obviously helpful. However, there's a trade-off to that, you know? When you take classes with a lot of your friends, there's inevitably gonna be some slacking off. And a little bit of that is totally fine. But too much of it 
is truly dangerous. Just beware of taking too many classes with your friends because even though it makes it easier, you're gonna look back on your four years of college at the end of it and be like, I didn't learn a single thing. Again, not speaking from experience or whatever, but just trust me on this one. Push yourself and challenge yourself. Not too much, of course, but a decent amount. If you wanna take a class, but no one else is taking it, don't let that stop you. If you're interested in it, go take that class. I think it's good to force yourself to learn, to force yourself to do work the way it's meant to be done. Because if you're unable to do that, if you're unable to actually like put in work for a class to actually work hard, you're not gonna get anything done in life. In terms of signing up for classes, if you know what major you're gonna be and you're dead set on it, then like you're fine. Just look at what classes you need to take for that major and go accordingly. If you do not know what you're gonna major in, my advice would be to focus first on your gen eds and a few exploratory classes in the fields that you think you're interested in. That way you don't waste your time on like taking all computer science courses and then realizing half a year into it that you actually hate computer science and you actually wanna do something completely different. Then you waste all that time taking computer science classes, right? An exploratory class here or there to find your interest, that is totally fine. I would say if you're not sure though, don't completely lean into one area. Okay, so once you've signed up for your classes, how do you then do well in your classes? Obviously you have to put in the work, but aside from that, there are a few tips and tricks that you can utilize that will make it a bit easier. The first thing, the first thing I would recommend is find a note-taking method that works for you. Now, I'm just gonna say it, a lot of people claim that typing their notes works for them. I would say that that has incredible potential to distract you at every second and is literally a gateway to not learning anything the whole semester. I don't wanna be one of those people that are like, do not use electronics in class because they're distracting because like you can do whatever you want, okay? It might work for you, but be sure that you're honest with yourself when you're deciding what works for you. A lot of people use, you know, the old pen and paper method. A lot of people use a tablet of some sort. Some people like to first write on paper and then type their notes into their laptop later. Find whatever thing works for you and stick with it. Because taking good notes and being able to effectively pay attention in class is key to doing well, if that wasn't obvious. Now, are there entire classes in which I never went to lecture once and still did fine on? Yes, there are. But I'm not recommending that as a way to pass your classes because you don't learn anything. And that should be the goal, learning. Now, if you think that one of the note-taking methods involving like a tablet or a laptop is one that works for you and you're looking to buy one of those items, then I have a great deal for you. I want to talk a little bit about the sponsor of this video, which is Best Buy. They are currently running some incredible back-to-school deals on essentially every school-related item you can think of. Laptops, tablets, over-the-air headphones that are trendy these days, kitchen appliances, dorm furniture, electric scooters, monitors, TV consoles, gaming consoles, portable speakers speakers, desk chairs, you name it. Some things I would recommend personally is if you want a tablet per se to take notes on, which I do have one, you could get it through them. If you wanna have like a monitor set up so that when you're doing your homework, you have a monitor screen and your laptop screen, which I actually really recommend, it's very helpful. You can get a monitor at Best Buy right now for $100. That's actually like insane. Over the ear headphones, which not only are very trendy right now, but also are great for noise canceling if you wanna work in louder environments. You can get some of those. They're actually selling the headphones I have, which are the Bose Headphone 700 wireless noise canceling over the ear headphones for $80 off, which is pretty damn good. They're having a sale on essentially all of these items. If you're missing anything, definitely go check them out. There's gonna be a link in my description that goes straight to their back to school deals page. So I'm serious, be sure to check them out. Like be sure to check them out. Thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Let's move on to the next tip. So battling imposter syndrome. It's inevitable that you're gonna face some of this, I think. I definitely met some people in my first couple of years at school that really, they just blew my mind that we were at the same institution. You're gonna meet some people who've been coding since they were like four months old. And it's hard to feel adequate when you're standing next to them. However, here is my best advice on how to combat imposter syndrome or how to like realize your own self value. I'm gonna highlight this using a personal example because I feel like that's the best way to do it. When I was in college, the things I were intimidated by when it came to like imposter syndrome were things like people who were really into recruitment, like recruiting for jobs. Anyone who was recruiting for jobs, that was like, you are God. 
and I am not. People who were doing very intense personal projects. People who were straying from the norm and taking pretty difficult classes from their very first semester. I was like, you're better than me. But like dissecting those things down, recruitment for jobs, for example. What I realized about like half a year into school is that actually recruiting for jobs is not that hard. Once you do a little bit of research on what like the tech recruitment process looks like, you'll probably figure out that you can be recruiting for jobs too, if you wanted to. What really got me to overcome my imposter syndrome, once I started doing a personal project, which was just making a web page that had all my biographical information on it, people started to be like, wow, you're doing a personal project. That is very cool. That is intimidating. You know, like all of a sudden I was that person to other people. And then I was like, this is all stupid. This is all like a complex in my head. We are all capable of achieving so much. If you're at a school, then you deserve to be at that school. And also lastly, what I wanna say is that all of this stuff that people are doing that might seem intimidating, they're all extra. Think of them as like side quests on your main path to success or whatever. You're not behind if by not doing these things. Sorry, I got really serious about that because like imposter syndrome was like something I struggled with for a long ass time. And um, my hope is that I will never feel that again, even though I know that's not true. The last thing I really want to stress this, guys, 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 please, if you take away anything from this video, take away this. It is not uncool to try hard or to be passionate about something. Now, maybe this is like my own delusion speaking, but when I was a freshman, I literally held myself back from joining clubs or organizations that I thought I was too cool to be in. What? That's so stupid. Like for some reason I thought my social capital would be brought down because people would be like, oh my God, you're trying at something? You have passion? That's so funny. You're such a loser. First of all, no one's gonna say that to you. Second of all, life is too short to care about people who will say that to you. I think it was like learned behavior from high school. Cause like if you were smart at my high school and you probably weren't cool. And if you were cool, you probably weren't smart. <laughs> People from my high school don't come for me. Obviously there are exceptions to that. So when I got to college, I was like, I'm gonna be cool. I'm gonna not try hard. I'm gonna not be smart. Literally so stupid. Just talking about it makes me wanna like kill myself because why was I like that? Anyway, if you have an interest, go pursue it. If you are looking to find an interest, go find it. It is cool to try hard and it's cool to be passionate about something. It really is. Now as a senior, I don't think I have a passion because I haven't found it yet. And that's super not cool. So yeah. So those were all my tips for today. I hope all of you have a lovely time at college. I hope you all hashtag thrive at college. Thank you to Best Buy for sponsoring this video. Be sure to go check them out. Link will be in the description. So yeah, have fun, be safe, and remember, focus on your education. That's what you're there for. Okay, bye.